I'll be honest with you, I thought I'd make this video months ago, but I kept abandoning the idea as it just felt too much like work and I do YouTube for fun, but it's a subject that just won't go away and indeed every day seems to bring a new terrifying claim about how COVID can basically cause permanent cardiac damage and we're all going to die of our hearts exploding like David Carradine in Kill Bill. So the solution I've come to to prevent myself de developing heart failure while making this video is to not write it in advance and just do it as a piece of camera as short and as concise as possible. So to any newcomers to the channel, welcome. My name is Rohan. I'm a heart doctor here in the UK. And of particular relevance to this video is my PhD research is in a field called cardiac MRI, which is a very specialist type of scan we do on the heart. You'll see why that's relevant. So to summarize the last six months from a cardiologist's point of view, COVID is a respiratory virus, obviously. It uh, causes its morbidity, predominantly virus effect on the lungs, but it affects the heart. We know that the sickest patients have a much worse outcome if the heart is affected. Although it should be emphasized, that's true for pretty much any serious illness. If you're sick enough from anything that your heart is involved, then you know, I'd make sure your will is up to date. We also learned that the most important pre-existing conditions for COVID are uh, that increase your chance of lethal or serious COVID are lung disease, heart disease, and increased age. Now, all of that applies to the sickest COVID patients because obviously that's where we've concentrated our research and efforts. Um, but the reason I'm making this video is because now some people have shifted focus onto those with mild or no symptoms of COVID. Now, I briefly mentioned this in my video about uh, where science goes to die. Uh, but I wanted to go into a bit more detail because there are some new developments and tell you a bit more about it. Incidentally, that video, the, YouTube lifted the shadow ban on it about 10 days after it was released. So my co-video literally did get a second wave. So first came a blockbuster study from Germany that used um, cardiac MRI to image the hearts of people that have recovered from COVID. So these are not sick people, they're well, they've recovered. And they announced an alarming 78% of people had inflammation of the heart, which of course sounds terrifying. And the news spread faster than COVID through a bingo hall and certainly went faster than any cardiology paper I've known. It went round the world in a day or two. And it led to things like sports leagues, like the Pac-12 and Big Ten uh, being cancelled in America. It's an understandable concern about the athletes being at extra risk because even if they've had a fairly a mild case of COVID, competitive sport makes your heart work hard, so they didn't want to put the athletes at extra risk. Then the head physician at Penn State said that one third of Big Ten athletes who had recovered from COVID had myocarditis on a cardiac MRI scan. That's the same thing as saying, as the German study is saying, myocarditis is inflammation of the heart. So together, these studies led to not only footballers being benched, but huge amounts of fear, which I've seen amongst my friends. I was inundated with texts after this news, asking if they should be worried. Um, and there's been a surge of uh, requests uh, for cardiac MRIs in well patients in America, perhaps contributed to a little bit by some of the cardiology bodies adding to the hysteria. Now, if you had recovered from COVID and you're feeling fine, but then you read 78% of people just like you who don't have symptoms were found to have this myocarditis in their heart, you'd want to get a scan too. But this is if it ducks like a quack. So of course, you know, it's not going to be as simple as that. The Penn State doctor had completely misquoted the stats. The German study was immediately criticized online for statistical impossibilities. As I said, I'm trying to keep this short, so if you want to see more details, um, check out the references below. But essentially, the distribution of how the data was uh, uh, arranged was just not biologically plausible. It was just way too tight. Now, a, a different version was immediately published with some of these numerical issues addressed. So I'm sure it was just all an error. But one concern remained, which is that of myocarditis. Now, myocarditis is diagnosed on cardiac MRI, yes, but in association with symptoms, uh, palpitations, abnormal heart function, chest pain, abnormal blood tests, but none of these were seen in the study. Now, as someone who's analyzed thousands of cardiac MRI pictures, there is a bit of subjectivity involved here. One of the things we do is measure parameters of inflammation. Uh, and myocarditis does cause these numbers to go up, but we don't know the significance of just seeing the number being slightly elevated in the absence of symptoms, because of course, normally we don't put normal, healthy people into the scanner. 
Now I've made a whole bunch of videos about overdiagnosis. A couple were about the Apple Watch, for example. And I said that if you look hard enough, in enough people, you will find abnormalities. But if 10% of the population, or even 1%, have something on a scan, but they're absolutely well, they don't have symptoms, and they don't go on to develop any problems, can you really call that an abnormality? Should you not just refer to it as a normal variant? Now, I'm going to share maybe a little too much information here, but axillary freckling is a finding of freckles in the armpit. And anisocoria is where your pupils are of different sizes. Now, a medical textbook will tell you that both of these signs are associated with serious neurological conditions. But I've got both of these signs, and despite what my friends will tell you, I'm pretty normal. So COVID has been studied more intensely than any disease in history. And the more we look, the more abnormalities we find. Now, it doesn't mean those abnormalities are always significant. However, I made an error with the numbers here, so I'm afraid you've got this janky voiceover. The main abnormality of inflammation was seen in 73 of 100 patients who had recovered from COVID and in 33 of 58 risk factor matched controls who are people that have a similar age and medical history but who have not had COVID. And that difference is not statistically significant. There was an interesting finding of scarring too in a few patients. Now that is not just a raised number of unknown significance. We do have studies showing that it can be important, but it was also seen in the risk factor matched controls. And indeed we see it in healthy endurance athletes, for example. Again, it's hard to know what it means in this context because we simply don't know what a normal amount of scarring would be a few months after a viral illness. Look, I know I bang on about how we've all got our inherent biases. I, I like to think I'm fairly neutral in this one. You know, I'm sympathetic to the athletes uh, affected, but I've got no connection to American sport to wish it to be open or not. As far as I'm concerned, there are only three real sports in the world, boxing, track and field, and cricket. Everything else is just glorified tiddlywinks. But I'm in no position to advise sports leagues what to do, making very tough decisions with good intentions to protect their athletes and fans. But what I can do is maybe offer you some reassurance, the viewer, who perhaps understandably saw these news reports and was worried. I can't predict the future any better than anybody else. I don't know the long-term long effects of uh, COVID on the heart. But so far, we don't have evidence that it's drastically different to other viruses. I don't know for sure. We don't have large data sets of people who've recovered from flu, for example, and their cardiac MRIs. But I do know we're not inundated with people who have got long-term heart damage from something like the flu. Listen, I understand where the caution is coming from. Uh, young, healthy people have died unexpectedly from cardiac causes, athletes, and of course, young people have died from COVID. And nobody wants to feed the narrative from the anti-science brigade who seek to downplay the severity of COVID at every opportunity and just flat out deny that, it has co that COVID has any effect on the heart. That's not what I'm doing. But we also need to rein in baseless speculation or fear-mongering so that our main messages don't get diluted. I put these videos together by drawing on the expertise of friends and colleagues who are way, way smarter than me. So I just want to thank them for making me appear clever on the internet. I want to share my gratitude with you, but not my advertising revenue.